What's going on everybody? Good morning, so happy Thursday. We have a Cummins ISX 15, if you're gonna see that there. So the customer is saying that he has a fault code. Fault code, and I'll show you which one it is. It is for fuel pressure, fuel rail, fuel metering. To my knowledge, the customer said, all injectors were replaced. Now they were not replaced with OEM injectors, they were replaced with rebuilt injectors. So um, about three months ago, four months ago, something like that, but he is getting some fault codes. We're gonna hopefully find out and see if it's an injector issue, a fuel pump issue, which it could be, uh, but I'm kind of leaning towards injectors. So what I'm gonna show you guys, number one, I'm gonna show you the code. Number two, I'm gonna show you the process to see if the fuel pump is the issue or possibly injectors are issues. And this is just kind of a generalization. It's not specific. Of course, you're gonna to have to kind of check things out for yourself. Make sure your filters are good. They look pretty new to me. So we're gonna go on from there. Let me plug in the computer. We're gonna hook up to this Peterbilt and go from as, there, guys. As promised, here is the fault code. Fault code 0559 has a four count. Injector metering rail one, pressure data. Okay, gives you a little description and it kind of, if you double click on it, let me see if I can show you. It gives you an idea, a sense of direction on which way this thing is gonna go when it comes to the repairs. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna launch it. I'm gonna open up and it does give you some troubleshooting guides, some steps. Um, it is pretty nice because it's a built-in feature that is part of the Cummins program. So if you go down the list, it's gonna give you some options. Okay, I hope this helps you guys out. Fuel. Restriction, gear, air and fuel, leaking fuel. Obviously that could be an issue. Leaking fuel injectors, injector connectors, malfunctioning pump. So these are things that you're gonna have to kind of test. Uh, don't be afraid to ask your customer and say, hey, what kind of work have you done? You know, most of the time they're gonna be pretty honest and it'll be pretty helpful because it'll give you a sense of direction as to which way to go and make your repairs. So if this helps you guys out, great. Guys, again, this is the fault code. These are the steps that I'm taking to go ahead and hopefully find out the issues and get this guy back on the road. Okay guys, so we are connected. And again, we're gonna check the customer's complaint. We're gonna verify that. Uh, customer was here last time, so we're gonna do a few things. So number one I'm gonna do is uh, connect. I'm gonna create my instance, which creates a little record or an image. That takes a few seconds, not a big deal. It shouldn't have any codes because I did clear them before he left a couple of days ago. No codes, okay, but the truck the customer has not driven the truck since. What I wanna do really quick is I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the truck and I'm gonna go here to my ECM diagnostic tests. Okay, this is the way I'm gonna do it. You guys may wanna have a different approach, entirely up to you. You can go here, fuel system leak test. Go to your bottom right where it says next. Okay, uh, to system operates. It gives you a little warning, a little disclosure, guys, uh, again. What I'm really gonna look for, and I'm gonna show you this right now in a second. Let me fire it up first. Watch out, I'm done. All right, guys, so I went ahead and fired it up. And what I look for is this. I wanna make sure that the fuel system is giving me the PSI that I need, okay? If you're not familiar with the Cummins, to my knowledge, the PSI on the fuel pump should be about 29,000, 30,000 PSI. So I'm gonna click on start system's gonna go ahead and pressurize the rail. So you're gonna see that there. This is an idle test. This isn't high RPM. This isn't a, nothing like that at all. So again, it's just a, a fuel pressure rail. You can actually hear the motor. It's gonna sound a little different. It's just trying to make sure that it's able to build the correct PSI. And, and right now, this thing is struggling at 9,000 PSI, 10,000 PSI. Normally, it doesn't take this long to get to the PSI that we need. Again, the value here should be roughly 29,000, 30,000 PSI, but you're gonna see how it's struggling. I'm gonna stay quiet just so you can take a look for yourself. thousand so it should definitely be getting to 28 29 thousand a lot easier a lot faster it's 
taken a minute, almost two minutes, to get to 28,000 PSI. <laughs> Twenty-seven. So it actually dropped. It dropped again. So as you can see, guys, it does get to twenty-nine thousand, but it struggles. It kind of goes up, drops down, goes up, drops down. What I'm going to do next, and I do like this about the Cummins program, is it's I'm gonna do a performance test. Okay, if you're gonna see that there, fuel injector performance test. Click on that, click on next. Make sure you follow all the cautions that it's gonna give you, right? Make sure all conditions have been met. Click on yes. Uh, number one, make sure you have enough fuel. Number two, two, make sure your temperature is at least at 150 or higher. Good, good, good and let us go from there. So I'm gonna click on. All right guys, so I'm just gonna quickly narrate this and then I'm gonna be quiet so you guys can kind of see what's going on. It's gonna go ahead and check each cylinder, cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's gonna do number one. It's gonna do it at different test points number one, number two, number three, number four, okay? This is what's being commanded, fuel rail pressure being commanded. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're getting. I'm gonna see if I can actually monitor that by going here to my data. I'm gonna monitor, hold on guys, I'm trying to, uh... there we go, there we go. I'm gonna open that up, open that up. actually measured 28 so it's definitely not giving me everything I need but that doesn't mean necessarily I have a bad look at that injector one failed but it passed at the, at the third point so it's gonna do it at different ways again it's gonna give you the highest PSI on the first test points, one, two, three. After that, it's gonna lower it. So guys, you're gonna have to keep that in mind when you're testing. So I'm gonna fast forward most of this so you're gonna just kinda get the highlights of it. Okay guys, we're back. So take a look at that. Number one, failed, failed, pass, pass. Number two, pass all the way across the board. Number three, failed first test point. So right now what it's gonna do is it's measuring and if the requirements are not met, either we have an injector issue or we have a fuel pump issue or we could have both. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that we would have something like that, but earlier we did the fuel pump and it seemed like it was struggling. So I don't know guys. You know, this is going to be a tough one because again, this was, these are rebuilt injectors. These are not OEM injectors. Now I understand OEM injectors, 1500 bucks a piece. Multiply that times six injectors. That's some expensive, expensive stuff. So just to give you an idea of what you're kind of looking at or where to look. So once we do this test, I'm going to let everything cool off because again, this is already 200 degrees. I'm gonna check the fuel lines, make sure everything is torqued down properly. There might be an issue where they're not torqued down properly, the lock nut or the casting nut, and that may allow some fuel pressure to kind of bleed off and probably cause this issue. But we'll find out and we'll go from there, guys. I'm gonna kind of do this in maybe a two-parter. 
So just wanted to show okay, you. Okay guys, we are done with the test so far. Let me show you what the results are. I'm gonna snap this for the customer so he can see for himself. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really let me print it from the screen. I don't think it does, let's see. No, it does not. Anyway, so you can see for yourself what the results are. Cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, definitely got something going on. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know what you think right now. Uh, I don't have any fault codes, but either way, you guys saw the results. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this thing down. I'm gonna let it cool off. And my plan of attack, what is this? Yeah, I don't care about that. I'll worry about that later, guys. So my plan of attack is this. I'm gonna check a few things out. Right, as of now, what I'm gonna do is let this thing cool off. I'm gonna check the fuel lines, make sure everything is torqued down properly. But more importantly, what I want to do is I wanna make sure the casting nut behind there, okay, not this fuel line one, but behind there, because it's gonna have a, a tube that feeds through. I'm gonna make sure that those are all torqued down properly. If they are, great. If they're not, then obviously we can torque them down and go from there. But like I said, I gotta let this thing cool off. Uh, this is definitely not the most comfortable truck to work on just because you've got all this bullshit here. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, guys. So let it cool off. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna torque everything down, make sure it's verify it's done properly, put all back together, and I'm gonna test again. If the results are the same, then we know, hey, possibly injectors are gonna be a culprit, which I'm thinking that's what they are. This is why you typically don't wanna go with rebuild ones just because you do have problems. Uh, fuel filters, like I said, those look good. We could, at the end of the day, have a bad fuel pump. It is original fuel pump. It does look like that solenoid has been replaced. That doesn't look like it's original just because of the color. So if you're looking at it, give you a heads up. Somebody says, oh yeah, it's a brand new fuel pump. Guys, they never send them painted red, ever, ever, okay? So if you see it painted red, it's more than likely it's gonna be original, just like everything else on the truck. If it's painted red, it's probably gonna be original. If it's a different color, it has been replaced, harnesses included. So give you guys a heads up. I'll keep you guys all posted and uh, let's see what we find out with this truck. Okay guys, so following up to part two of the video, Right now, what I'm doing is I'm testing the repair or the, what we did was checking the lines that they were torqued properly. So as of now, again, it's a simple process. The computer's gonna do everything. It's loud, truck shakes a lot. You're gonna see the RPMs bouncing, so it's a little freaky to look at the first time. Don't worry about it. Uh, but let's see, number one passed, but number two is now failing. So that is interesting. We may have still an issue with um, injectors, but I'm gonna let the test run by itself and see what it does. I may run the test again once the truck reaches a better temperature. Right now, I'm barely at about 160, 170. So I'm gonna let the truck do its thing. I'll show you guys the results in a few minutes. Okay guys, so this is actually really good. I'm pretty impressed with the way things are turning out. As of now, this test is going by a lot faster than the first one. The first one, it's really seemed to struggle. We may still have an issue here, here potentially. Number six failed one test point. We'll find out what it's doing with the rest. Number two failed one test point, but passed everything else. I'm gonna put a little side by side. Hopefully I can do that right here on the video. And you're gonna see for yourself what the difference was where we had a lot more fail points than before or fail points the first time. After that, we had a lot more success. So this is, this is actually pretty good. I'm kind of happy with the way things turned out. I'm gonna actually suggest that the customer run it and see what he thinks if he has an improvement. If it's still kind of falling on itself and not having any power, then of course we're gonna have to pull the injectors out. He's gonna have to take them back to where he got them and go from there. But all in all, pretty impressive. I mean, this is pretty good. Again, look at that, pass, pass, pass. Uh, it only failed like you see there for yourself. So guys, I hope this helps you guys out. Um, it doesn't mean by any, by no means does it mean that this truck is running 100%, but at the very least we're in the right direction. Um, these two injectors, or you know what, I mean, depending on what relationship you have with whoever did the work or whoever you bought them from, you may pull them all out and take them back. But you know, some guys will say, this is why you go OEM only and you don't go rebuild. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I wanted to follow up with you guys and show you guys kind of the results. I know sometimes we leave these videos kind of leave you hanging and all. Um, but, you know, it is hard to do the work and record. So, guys, I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it helps you understand a little bit more about the fuel system and how to possibly test and what to look for. So, if you like the video, as always, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share. 
Appreciate you all watching. Thanks.